So this video is going to show you how to make a freeze dryer. These things work by removing water from food without it melting. Water sublimates at pressures lower than the regular atmosphere, meaning the dryers need to be able to handle a vacuum. Normal freeze dryers cost many thousands to buy, so it does make some sense to build your own. In theory, they only require a main food chamber, a water vapor cold trap, and a vacuum pump. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that. It's still not bad, though. So let's build one. I started off by getting two 8x8 by, by half inch thick aluminum plates. And I found some pre-stamped rubber gaskets online that fit my plates. You could always just cut your own out of some tire inner tube. The gaskets help decide where to drill the holes. I used a 27 64 drill bit in my drill press to tap the holes with a half inch by 12 pipe tap for the main tubing. Then a 7 16 bit and a quarter by 18 tap for the vacuum gauge holes. On the vapor trap plate, I blind drilled four number 29 holes, then tapped them with an 8 by 32 tap. A little sanding to get these spots off and these parts are looking pretty good. Now the tube I am using is one inch in diameter, which is way more than necessary. It's just what I had. Half inch or three quarter tube would work fine. Just make sure it is made to hold a vacuum without crushing or outgassing too much. Bigger tubes do flow particles better at such low pressure, but the reducer sort of ruined that anyway. These are all the connectors I need to take one inch down to half inch. Add some Teflon tape and a little tightening beyond reason. These wrenches will wreck the outside of your parts, but I didn't mind much because they are more compact. Then I installed some quarter inch flare fittings for my vacuum gauge line. Now I'm using a digital thermocouple type vacuum gauge. A normal analog gauge would also work fine. The vapor trap also gets an aluminum divider screwed in with some short machine screws. These bowls sit my top plates nicely and are thick enough not to break under pressure. You could use almost any shape containers for chambers. I found this big stainless steel bowl that my glass one fits into nicely, but it's going to need some insulation. I measured and cut three 2 inch thick 14 by 14 foam squares. After marking some circles, I cut the middles out with a bandsaw, and hot gluing them all together, the bowls fit nicely. I added some expanding foam to fill the gaps and insulate it better. Next, I cut some 3 8 rod to 6 inches and 1 inch long. After feeding these through some holes I drilled and adding some nuts and washers, these make for some nice legs. After some positioning, I cut my tubing to size and pushed it on the barbs. Some vacuum grease and hose clamps make the seals official. Then I added my vacuum gauge to one flare and an end cap to the other. I will be using this Robinair 3 CFM air conditioning service pump. A normal shop vac will not work. We need to get down to some low pressures. I also use these KF or NW25 type vacuum connectors so that the pump will work with other things. And that pretty much finished up the build. So I fired up the pump and pushed the bowls onto the gaskets. Once the seal is established, it will hold really good. The lower the pressure, the better for freeze drying. But keep in mind, you'll also have to keep the vapor trap colder. If you have a really good chamber, negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit shouldn't sublimate at any pressure. You can refer to a water phases diagram to get an idea of the temperatures and pressures you'll have for each. Just remember, you're going to want to leave some big margins around these numbers. So now let's freeze dry some stuff. First, you need to fully freeze the food, like negative 30 degrees F if it has sugars in it. I just stuck my food in the dry ice block overnight. All the deep freeze food was put in the main chamber. I turned on the pump and got a good seal. And the vapor trap bowl was dunked into a pre-chilled dry ice and isopropyl alcohol bath. The isopropyl alcohol gets thicker at such low temperatures and the food holds its shape even though it's above freezing temperature. We need to get all the water out of this stuff. This is gonna take a few hours. Be sure to check it every so often to keep it at temperature. The intervals would depend on how much insulation you have and how big the bowl is, because if the vapor trap gets too warm, all the collected ice will end up in the vacuum pump and wreck it. It seems most efficient for me at negative 50 to negative 60 because the dry ice won't disappear as fast. With this much insulation, I only had to check it every 45 minutes to an hour. If you will be using this often or don't have access to dry ice, the hacked water bubble will work. Just wire it so the compressor always runs and it should reach negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit after a few hours. You'll just have to guess when it's done. I pumped all of them for over 14 hours, and used quite a bit of dry ice. So here are the finished products. Ice cream is great and tastes just like astronaut ice cream. Strawberries and raspberries also taste good. Slate fruit works well, but it looks nasty. Things with the skin are a bad idea, as it pops late and no freeze drying happens. Just like cooking food, the bigger the item, the longer it's going to take to get to the middle. And an awful lot of water comes out of this stuff. It would take some experimenting to find out the times versus thicknesses, as well as what really works. There are an awful lot of things you could freeze dry. The freeze dried food will keep forever and always taste weird. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want.